Hebrews, Art of Puerto Rico. Hebrews are the Puerto Rican pioneers who live simply, caring for homeland and family. They cultivate foods and raise livestock of their Taino, Spanish, and African ancestors. Hebrews have withstood the ravages of earthquakes, hurricanes, and foreign rule with natural wisdom and determination. They are a symbol of Puerto Rican pride. Ruled by Boricin caciques, chiefs, the Taino people fished, hunted, and cultivated crops. Living in bojillos, dwellings made of straw and yagua palm, they played ball games and danced to music of the maracas, flute, and giro, notched hollowed out gourd. In 1493, Christopher Columbus colonized the island for Spain, changing its name from Borken to San Juan Batista. Later, the name would change again to Puerto Rico, Rich Port. In 1508, the first governor of the island, Juan Ponce de Leon, founded the first Spanish settlement. He parceled out 500 acres to each European settler. The Spanish believed that God had given them the right to seize Indian land and enslave native peoples. After the Spanish took their land, Cacique Aguibana El Bravo said, Let he who was born in Spain return to Spain. He and other caciques led many brave Taino warriors into battle against the Spanish conquistadors. Within 25 years, most Tainos were captured or killed. The Spanish enslaved the remaining Tainos, forcing them to cultivate crops and mine for gold. The Spanish were excited by the existence of gold on the island, but only a small amount was found, all within the first few years. Native crops of the Tainos were pineapples, yuca, peppers, peanuts, guavas, cocoa plums, pumpkins, palm tree fruit, beans, corn, tobacco, and cotton. The Tainos made clay pottery and wove cloth. From gourds, they carved gyros, utensils, and maracas. The Spanish brought citrus fruit, wheat, garbanzos, onions, garlic, sugarcane, eggplant, horses, cattle, and pigs. On the island, there were many marshes, gullies, and rivers to cross, and few roads. Horseback was the best means of transportation. Islanders quickly became accomplished riders. As the Tainos and Spanish interbred, a new breed of islanders emerged. As a distinct culture, the Tainos did not survive, eventually dying from harsh labor or European diseases. In 1513, by royal Spanish order, Africans were imported to replace the dwindling Tainos workforce. Treated like livestock, slaves endured many cruelties. Slave codes gave sweeping powers to their masters. Also imported from Africa were coconuts, Plantains, coffee, okra, yams, sesame seed, peas, and bananas. Plantains became a mainstay of the islanders' diet. Cooked as a vegetable, fried in the form of tostones, boiled in soup, and baked into bread for three daily meals. Coffee, sugarcane, and tobacco were cultivated and exported primarily to Spain. For many years, the Spanish crown limited island imports and exports to within the Spanish Empire. Over time, however, many islanders worked around regulations by smuggling in better and cheaper goods from other trade partners. After Haiti's slave rebellion disrupted sugar production, merchants and refineries turned to Cuba and Puerto Rico. Slave labor continued on sugar plantations like Hacienda La Fortuna until 1873. With great profits from exports of sugar, 
tobacco, and coffee, big plantations abandoned cultivation of fruits, vegetables, and livestock. These staples of the islander diet were produced by poor, illiterate country farmers who came to be known as Heberos. Laboring from dawn until dusk, they looked forward to festivals and celebrations with music, dancing, poetry, and storytelling. In 1810, there were few schools on the island. Maestro Rafael Cordero, the son of a freed slave, and his sister, Celestina, gave free lessons to both free and slave youths. In 1844, the Spanish governor refused to allow the opening of more schools, fearing that an educated populace would question his authority. In 1868, islanders rebelled against huge tariffs and taxes, slavery and Spain's power over every aspect of island life. Capturing the town of Lares, they proclaimed the Republic of Puerto Rico, but were quickly defeated. Some slaves purchased their freedom with money they earned at trades. Slaves led by Marcus Ciro fought for freedom in 1821, but slavery was not abolished on the island until 1873. As Africans intermarried with other islanders, a unified Creole society evolved with Taino, Spanish, and African ancestry. With the end of forced labor on large plantations, many more Creoles settled in the mountains and plains where they farmed their own small plots of land. As simple country farmers, the Hebrews led different lives than the city dwellers of the island. The Puerto Rican artist Francisco Oyer gave us a glimpse into their lives in his painting of a bakine, a wake for a small child. In a small thatched hut, Hebrews watch over the dead child all night, celebrating at the vigil of the little angel. Friends and family sing, drink, and dance. They play musica brava, joyful, spirited music, and danzas, soft, sorrowful melodies. They play maracas, left, a cuatro, center, and a giro, right. Lovers embrace, children play, no one weeps for fear their tears might wet the wings of the little angel on his flight to heaven. Most eyes eagerly gaze up at the roast suckling pig fastened to a long pole, carried through the door by a boy. Machetes are readied for carving the pig. An old freed man bids farewell to the child, surrounded by flowers and lace. Discounted by many as superstitious folly, the bacchine is still observed today by many Hebrews who celebrate life both in good times and in bad. Within the soul of the Hebrew is the rhythm of Africa, Europe, and the Americas. The ravages of nature, foreign domination, and physical exhaustion cannot drown it out. From the land it came, it is the beat of the Hebrew's heart. <laughs>